students here. Uh, have you seen this picture before? Valero Engineering College. If you have seen this picture before, you can raise your hands. Okay, nobody was raising. A couple of you raised your hands, but not all of them. Actually, it's a very funny picture, right? You can see how the customer explained it and how uh, by the time it got implemented what it was. And uh, but you can see what the customer really needed. If you go from top left corner here to the top bottom corner here, you can see, hold on a second, I have to close the door. Give me a second, please. Okay, I'm back. So there are a lot of there, there are a lot of stories that we can learn from this, right? What is the moral of the story here, right? What if you if I if I just take what the customer really needed on the bottom right, and then if I see how the customer explained it on the first one here, uh, top left. Uh, what what is it that we can uh, uh, deduce about the customer? So it's a question to uh, let's see. Uh, we'll start with the good level later today. Okay, it's a question to the students here. So the question is, what can I deduce about the customer by looking at this picture, the top left and then the bottom right? The question is for the students and good level Eru. If you have a speaker, you can speak up. If you don't have a speaker, you can put it in chat. What can it deduce? Deduce means what what does it imply? I can see faculty member giving the speaker to people. So did good level Eru Engineering College bring a bag of chocolates or cookies today? I know Vijayanagaram did that last time. Nobody from Good Level Air want to talk? Oh, somebody is volunteering. That's good. Come on, that's an easy question. Good morning, sir. A customer uh, needs me, something to swing. Uh, tell me, uh, state your name first. Jyoti, sir. Okay, excellent. Tell me, Emma. Uh, he needs uh, he needs something to swing. Okay. He needs something to swing. That's what customer needs. That's what you did use. Okay, give it to someone else who wants to say something else in your room. How about the? Uh, how about I? I will ask you to microphone to the back bencher on the right. See the four guys sitting together. Give it to that white shirt. One of those one of those four people there. If they are students, if they are faculty, then don't give it to them. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Tell me your name. Sairam Reddy. Excellent, Sairam. Tell me. He needs what, a what, step. Hmm. He needs a step to uh, climb the tree, sir. He needs a step so to climb the tree. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Two from Good Level Air have answered. Keep them like that. Now let's move to Aditya Engineering College. I think they are here, right? Yeah. So let's go to Aditya Engineering College, and let's get a couple of answers from them. Right now, I see a blank room there in Aditya Engineering College. Chairs on I see chairs. I don't see audience. Anyone there in Aditya Engineering College or they are still setting up the room? Okay, we'll do a pass of Aditya Engineering College. And go to. 
Chakravarti Garu's room here. I do see some students here. I'll unmute them. So, so I do see a few students there. I think the I think the other students have a hangover after the midterms. That's why I see less number of students there. So, Chakravarti Garu Mirunte, ask one of your students to tell me what they deduce from this. Ah, now I see a few students. How about the first row here? I can see the speaker is being given to one of the students there. Okay, are they having connection problems? I see them gone out of my view here. So I, shall I tell you what I think? Okay, they, they came back. Okay, go ahead, Chakravarti Garu's room. Okay. Somebody. I didn't ask you to sing. Singing would be much tougher. I'm just asking you a simple question. Come on. Or maybe I should convert this lecture into, an, into that Indian Idol program, then all of you will come forward. If my question is not clear, you can say so also. OK. Uh, that is way too much time for them, so I'm going to override them now. So uh, good, good level later, whatever you answered. They're all, there's no right or wrong answer in those things. It was meant to uh, start a discussion there. Oh, Aditya Engineering College has come now. They, are, they seem to be in a rush to come. Okay, that's good. Uh, but we'll skip them for this question because they're still settling down. Okay, the question was looking at the picture. What can I deduce from the top left picture and the bottom right picture? Because they both pertain to the customer. The answers that we got are two, right? One, uh, one student said uh, something to the effect of that the customer needs a swing. Somebody was speaking. Okay. So one student said, the customer needs a swing. The other student said the customer wants something to climb the tree. Uh, who knows? I can't read the customer, but I can tell you what I think about the customer when I look at it. Right? That. Uh, <laughs> let me be blunt here first, then I'll I will finish my answer. OK? The customer probably is a total idiot. I'm using a strong word there. Apologies to all the faculty members there. That's not how Indian style of teaching is. I know that. OK. Why do I say that the customer has no clue is an idiot? Because one of the one of the key things as a consultant that we need to be aware of is don't assume the customer knows exactly what he wants. It is extremely rare to find a customer to know exactly what he wants. OK, if you notice bottom right corner, what the customer wanted was I can see a tire, a swing made up of a tire, right? You have a tire which is hanging from the tree. Uh, you can actually sit in the tree in the in the tire and then swing if you want. But how did he explain it? When he explained it, that's what goes back to the uh, top left corner. He didn't he didn't say he needs a tire that should be hung from a tree branch. What he said was he kind of gave me uh, the picture tells me it's like a ladder, right? A ladder type swing. That's how the customer explained it. Right. So. To get to that bottom right corner. What you have to do. 
customer really won't need it this, but if you start off with the customer explained it, and then you go build it, then what happens? You see the sequence, right? This is where precisely your role as a as a as a modeler or an expert in modeling comes into play. So what we do when our customer tells us something, we model the system. Okay, so now what is a model? That is the next question, right? Because that focus of today's lecture is actually on system modeling. Okay, remember earlier we talked about a couple of things, right? One is if you know the use cases, and if you know the data, you are off to a good start. Then you come up with a few uh, models which would further clarify what the customer really wants. Then you can go implement it. So, so that is the moral of that story there. Okay, so today's focus system modeling. Now, before I get in there, uh, based on what we have learned so far, and does anyone have any questions? If you have any questions, uh, put it in the chat or, or speak up. Okay, looks like no one has any questions yet. Okay, good. So I will. able to put it in a presentation here hold on okay let me stop sharing for a second okay view view slide sorter reading view Okay, I'm sharing it in a Okay, you should be seeing my slide here now. Okay, I'm having some difficulty with the Screens here, bear with me for a second. Okay, perfect. Okay, so the topic is systems modeling today. Okay, okay it looks like we are all set now, all the students are there. So we'll cover as much as we can. A uh, couple of logistic issues uh, uh, to uh, take care of before we start the lecture. Uh, this week is the last week for all students to go enroll in the community. Okay, so lensu.com, we talked about how to enroll there, go and uh, become a member of that community. That's where we share all the files and we'll do interactive discussions. Uh, the deadline for enrolling is this coming before your Vinayak Chauti. I think Thursday you don't have college. Uh, so that is Wednesday night my time. Uh, we have to reschedule, reschedule that class. I sent a note to the faculty members. I can do that any day of the week other than Friday night, my time. So students, by Wednesday, your time. That is where all the uh, lectures, everything would be posted. And that's where I'll be asking you to uh, submit some assignments and things like that and project teams and so on, right? Uh, the reward for you for joining is there will be a raffle at the end of the term where I'll uh, give away some prizes for the people who have joined the community. Okay. And if you don't join the community by this Wednesday, uh, I will be locking the community. That means you would not be able to join the rest of the term. Okay. Uh, OK, so these are the topics. Context models, interaction models, structural models, behavioral models, model driven engineering. They are models, models and more models. OK, 
So all these things are important. And you should not assume that for every project you will come up with all the models. What I call about these things are these are to me like a like a toolbox. You have this uh, handyman coming and repairing right things like plumbing, kitchen work, electrical and things like that. They carry a toolbox. So this is my toolkit. So depending on the context, depending on the size and scope of the project, uh, depending on how much money the customer can give me, depending on how much time, all of those things, I use one or more of these models. Okay. So first of all, we need to understand system modeling, right? So before we understand system modeling, uh, uh, let me put a slide here. I'll create a slide here. What is a model in the first place? Now that Aditya Engineering College has settled down, can somebody from Aditya Engineering College answer the question? What is a model? How do you define a model? is for Aditya Engineering College students. I know they have been very interactive in the past. Oh, I lost the connection for them or just the video screen. OK. Uh, OK, they are back up. The question is, how do you define a model, right? Smiling doesn't help. It's not a, it is not a stupid question, by the way. Okay, pass. Aditya Engineering College, I'm passing you. What is a model? Chakravarti Garas room. How do you define a model? Give me an example of a model. How about I change the question to, give me an example of a model. They lose Chakravarti Garu. By the way, faculty members are welcome to answer this question too. And if students are shy, okay, I see somebody from Chakravarti Garu's room called. Okay, go ahead, talk Chakravarti Garu's room. They were saying something. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Myself, Amud, sir, and coming to the question that what is model, I would like to say that it is something like we can say deduced form of some object or something, sir. Deduced form of some object or something. Yes, sir. Deduced and in the kind of, what do you mean by deduced form? Deduced means like some real object will be there, sir, and there copy or some small form of representation, so we can say. Oh, excellent, excellent. That's a great answer. So you are basically, you have some real object in the in the outside world, and then you are trying to represent it in your model. That's what you mean. Yes. So can you give me an example? For coming to examples, uh, what we can say is like, whatever we have or something, we can say like we have Taj Mahal, sir. In okay. real world. And then we find something that resembles Tasmal, sir, in 
some shops or some toys and something like that sir oh i see okay that's a great model sir that's a great one great one excellent you want a kit kat from me chakrotigar bag of cookies this he deserves a cookie thank you sir okay good good uh, so that's true actually what you said is true it's some form of a representation right yes sir so representation of the real world let's say that right yes sir now there are some interesting scenarios whenever we talk of a model then the question the follow up question is aditya you can answer this one aditya college is model as big as the real world object or is it small ignore my typos and uh, shorthand english writing there okay so when you are representing something as a model uh, are this in a, is the model tends to be as big as the real world object aditya i am giving you an opportunity you can take the help of your faculty members there today good love leru and uh, chakravarti garu's classroom already earned their points now it's aditya's turn somebody what is ideal ideal is aditya college ja okay so it looks like they are all very quiet today that's okay so generally what happens is right model let's take this one right when you build a car or when you build a house in this case model tends to be smaller do you agree right uh when when a rich man is building a house they don't have a blueprint they create a small model made out of wood blocks or something like that right and then it's smaller in scale right now what about when you build a when you build a car like all the car manufacturing typically when you build a car they build a prototype of a car that is a model of a car right tends to be tends to be same size of the actual car okay not always the not always the uh, uh true that it has to be smaller okay in the case of a car typically it tends to be as big as the car and then you make some uh, analysis out of that okay now you are all computer science and engineering students right imagine you are building you you have to model a a chip design this is an interesting case because here model is actually much larger then the final product right you all know about chips right they are so tiny and small and all that but as an as an engineering team when you are modeling a chip design what do you do you create all those layouts right you use a cat software or pcb layouts i remember when i was doing some hardware project i had to create a humongous pcb layout diagram okay so you have different different things here so what do we learn here first it's some kind of a representation okay it could be small it could be same as the final product or it could be larger now the next question is why do we need to build a model because mod
is here today. Okay. When I my off a 15 minute class assignment, which class. does and we use that as a basis to understand the strength and weaknesses, right? So that is how you refine your requirements. Okay. Um, engineers use these models to discuss design proposals, right? Uh, so whenever you're doing model driven engineering process, uh, it is possible to generate a complete or partial system implementation from the model. What does it mean? What it basically means is uh, there is some kind of an auto generation of code from the model. What is a classic example? Uh, I do not know if you're in a database class or any other classes. Uh, have you used the RUP, uh, the uh, the IBM RUP model, RUP? Uh, it's a unified model, right? For uh, for analysis, design, and implementation. UML. Basically, it's a UML model where uh, I open up the tool, I show my classes and objects. You learn some Java programming, right? You understand what classes are. Uh, you understand objects. So I I draw some class diagrams and so on, and then I can simply say generate code. Another example, uh, if you are in an Oracle environment in the, I, I do not know when was the last time I used Oracle. I used to use Oracle forms builder and all that. So in the UI, when I show the form as to what it should be and the constraints and so on, and when I hit the generate button, it used to generate SQL code for me in the back end. Okay, so whenever you're doing model driven approach, Depending on what type of tools you're using, some of the back end code can be uh, generated. Okay. Now, when you're doing a model, there are so many models, right? Uh, everyone understands the model of a house, right? Your parents or your relatives or somebody would have built a house um, and you probably would have spoken with them and you would have heard things such as, oh, I have a, a blueprint of it, of the house that I'm building. Blueprint is the architect's vision, right? As to how things flow, one room to other room, to kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, and all of that, right? But that's not the only model that they create. There is a model for electrical wiring. There's a model for plumbing, right? So they are different models. So they are all different perspectives, as we call. Them. So same thing when we are building software or systems, uh, you have different perspectives. One is an external perspective, meaning where your model, the context of your model, okay, or the environment of the system. I'll I'll give you some examples of that in in a minute, okay. And then you have interaction, meaning. Hey, how does your system work with your environment or between the various components of a system? Okay. Now you have the structural perspective, meaning how is the system organized and how is your data organized? Okay. And then you have the behavioral perspective, meaning how does your system react to various stimuli? Okay. A lot of theory there, right? So let me give. Uh, there's an example that they give here and we'll come up with our own example too. Okay, we'll see that. Okay. By the way, these slides are in the community there. They're posted and I assume that you have downloaded it. Okay, so one of the uh, uh, one of the most used techniques in the world is UML diagrams. Uh, show of hands, how many of you have heard about UML? Good level layer. Okay, all of you. Now keep your hands raised. Keep your hands raised. Keep your hands raised. Okay, we are doing some yoga there, right? Now, uh, how many of you think you are experts in UML? If you are not experts, you can put your hands down. Oh my God, you are zero there. 
<laughs> okay, three or four of you are experts. Okay. Now all the others, make sure you get at least one member of the team on your project. They'll be very useful for you. Okay, give them dinners and lunches. They'll draw all of your diagrams for the project. Okay. Okay, so uh, for those of you who have used UML, uh, you know it's a very powerful tool, right? You create what? Class diagrams, use case diagrams, activity diagrams, sequence diagrams, and state diagrams, the finite state machines, right? There are so many diagrams that are there in the UML tool. Um, I don't know about you, uh, I always get lost and I'm supposed to be uh, one of the uh, um, what I would call it as one of the early adopters of object technology. I remember long time ago in HP, I was the first one pretty much in the industry to create an entire curriculum on object technology, right? Uh, when you have so many diagrams, now it, it, as I, I keep saying the same thing, right? Use them as a toolkit. It's not like you have to use all of them all the time. Okay? okay. I'm not giving you a, a, a teaching thing on UML, you know that. Okay? Now, when you have these graphical models, right? Somebody is saying something? Okay. So when you have these graphical models, they, they kind of facilitate better discussion with the customer because customers typically understand pictures. Okay. Um, and then not only customer, you understand the system better too. Right, it's a two way street. Okay. Um, there are some uh, automation tools available where we do model checking for correctness and completeness. The reality is nobody really uses those things in standard six to nine month projects. Okay. So you have the context model to begin with. So picture yourself, all of you close your eyes. Are you closing your eyes for a second? That was an instruction from me. I can't see the pictures well, but I'm assuming a clear. Now imagine yourself in Silicon Valley. You just took the flight, Air India flight, risky flight, but you landed in Silicon Valley and I gave you a project. Okay. So now I'm, when I'm asking you to execute the project, what is the first thing that you need to do? Is to build a context model. The reason is, this is called scoping. How many of you have heard the word scoping, project scoping, right? So context model allows you to scope your project to begin with. You know what is inside your system, what is supposed to do, and what is outside of your system. So draw a boundary, then it becomes much easier, right? Uh, you know precisely what interfaces need to be there between your system and the external systems. Okay, that is the usefulness of context models. Okay, now how do you determine the boundary? Right, there's always a lot of give and take. That's what is uh, reflected in bullet two there. Right, social and organizational concerns may affect the decision on where to position system boundaries. Now, as you get into the work stream. You will you will begin to see this more and more. What is not stated in the slide is social and organizational concerns also includes politics. Okay, remember I told you once. Uh, I think I if I recall, I said I was uh, one of the first to develop the Cisco curriculum, and I think I gave you the example where the manager gave me a a big contract, but he set me up for failure. Right? That's where the politics are. Because when I was developing those curriculum models for them, there are other teams which are saying, no, that is not your job, that is our job. So the boundaries were determined more politically. Okay. And there are technical reasons too. We'll we'll get into those things as we go along and when you do your project too. 
and then you get into to architectural models, which shows basically the relationship with other systems. Okay, so you establish the boundaries. What is inside and out? Very. Right. Oh, and as it says here, it's a system. This is the overall context. Now, there's another word that we use for these types of context things. For people who raise their hands uh, from, was it Good Level Aero or which college they raised that? This is the one, right? Good Level Aero. They, they, since you already know UML, all of you raised your hands, there's another term that we use for context. Now, other model, process model. What does the process model do? It shows the activities, right? So you have a process, and then you go from end to end, the beginning of the process and end of the process, and then all the activities that happen as part of the process, okay? Okay, do you see the picture that I'm sharing? You can't hear me. Hold on. Okay, you are able to hear me. Perfect. So as you can see here, the process model for involuntary detention, the slide deck. Um, I don't understand why they mean by detention, but it basically shows some kind of activities. The boxes are activities, and then you see arrows how the process flows. And this blue circle shade here is the starting point. Okay, and then at the end here, this that is the end of that process. So this, they are modeling some kind of a detention of the patient. Involuntary means they are holding back the patient forcefully. Okay. So you are saying confirm detention decision. You are doing that. And then you are informing the patient of right. At the same time, you are recording the Then you go to the right, you typically from the shaded uh, circle here to the double circle, which is the end, right? You go to the right, and then you have a decision point. You all know the decision point. If he's a dangerous patient, you find a secure place. If he's not a dangerous patient. Now, now when I'm reading this one, I'm getting ideas, right? I'm thinking maybe some guy, let's say the, the uh, cops shot a terrorist and terrorist got hurt before cops can really question him and all that, kind of like politicians faking faking their illness, right? You have to admit them to the hospital. Now, if he's a dangerous client like our Don Three Shah Rukh Khan, 
then you have to you have to detain him in the hospital, right? So that is what it is. Now, if it is if it is Shah Rukh Khan, it is a normal criminal, then uh, the danger of flight is not there. Then you simply admit them to the hospital. So that's how you kind of read this diagram, okay? Which is okay. I'm able to make sense out of it because I am a trained computer scientist, okay? But compare this and contrast this rather. Compare and contrast this with this one. I will see if I can minimize, uh, expand it, right? So what this is, is uh, uh, this is a real life example, okay? This is my from my line of work at Cisco. Remember I told you I manage vendors, we manage a reward system and all that. So we we set up what are known as offers in the system for partners. Offers are nothing but promotions. Hey, you sell this, you make this much money. Now, how do we set up those things in the system? There's a process for that. Okay. So we email. This is the starting point. Our customer service team. See the black shaded circle. That's my starting point. So we email to regions. Okay. Regions and take different uh, groups like you have the Asia pack, you have EMEA, you have Latin America, you have US and all that. So you can see arrow going from email to the business owner in the region. So they create the requirement saying, okay, you sell product P1, you get 1000 points. You sell product P2, you get 10,000 points. Those are the requirements. Once we get the requirements, then my own, I, I am I'm the project manager, right? You see this other lane here, I review the requirements. Same thing, the requirements are reviewed by customer service team. After we both review, if we get questions, right? Go back to the business owner and we clarify questions. So, so I assume you get the gist of it. By the way, the picture that I'm showing, there's a term for it. Anyone knows what the what it is called? Ask the fact member to give you a lunch coupon for ten dollars and I mean ten dollars kakada. Mustang get a lunch? Yeah. India is so rich now. I cannot afford. Somebody wants to answer it, I'll unmute it. Okay, nobody is answering. Due to low bandwidth, okay. Okay, I have unmuted a lot of people here. I have unmuted. Okay. So what I'm saying is the picture that I showed you. The picture that I showed you here, there's a particular name for this picture that I'm showing you. What is the diagram called is what I'm asking you. It's a question for the students and if anyone answers that. State charts. Okay, somebody is saying uh, activity diagram. Okay, somebody is saying state chart. Nope, I'm not looking for those names. Uh, I'm not sure if the activity diagram comes close to that. Uh, you could argue that it is. Have you heard the term swim lanes? Swim lanes. Did you hear the term swim lanes in any of your classes? Raise your hands if you did. 
Okay, somebody say good lawyer. Yes. So by now you should have answered that. Such an easy, stupid question, right? Silly that you refuse to answer, even though I'm giving you lunch coupon for that. Actually, what next class in counts all the rewards in the class up front. Answer is in all was staying in the So. So the, the swim lane, imagine, tell me which of them is uh, uh, power I don't know about if you really look at it, it's doing what right it's not just what the activities are but who is doing that activity right my ultimately analyzing it with the customer right what makes it easy to communicate with the customer is the focus so swim lanes if you if you are good at drawing swim lanes uh, you 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 will be good you will be earning good money okay so i always look good in my corporate work whenever i show them swim lanes user interactions sequence that let me chakravarti garu i'm assuming that use cases uh, jnt ada and all other uh, if somebody not thinks send me an email and i'll be very happy uh, um, uh, lectures in the community okay so stand sequence diagrams uh, uh, activity diagrams all these things are are there okay so real life i don't say actors i say who are the users of the system and what do they do with the system okay there it is see this one here great example right so you have a a medical receptionist who is okay and then uh, they are going to be transferring data to a patient court system it somebody uh, was asked to design na a patient records let's say uh, i am a client and said okay who are the users of the system they have told me the receptionist is a user of the system is she or he going to do would not say transfer data they will probably sounds abstract and so the reception center is the data right now that is what the easy to model okay there will be a template if you use a uml uh, uh, you will see a template where you fill out okay the user is the actor here is the medical receptionist i don't know whether i want to call patient record as it's more like a passive actor right it's a it is receiving the information okay and you are describing that use case as part of this use case say okay what is the data that you are associating with that use case so in this case name address age um, telephone number all that stuff who to contact in emergency 
it's, it's a patient thing, what treatment you're giving, okay? Now, when that use case get activated is the stimulus. So user command is medical receptionist, okay? And what is the response? The response is the system is going to confirm to the receptionist, hey, the now I like instead of calling sec comments here, since I'm a security guy, I would call, I would put another field called security. So in this case, security would be Anyone has any questions? No questions, I'll move on. So you can see these are all the uses for medical reception. So you register a patient, uh, unregister patient, I don't know what unregister means quite honestly, uh, meaning maybe the patient is not happy and they don't want to come. Uh, you can the transfer data. Somebody is saying something? None of you are on mute today. Okay. Okay. So. So what are sequence diagrams? Sequence diagram shows the order of the flow, right? When you have a logic, think of this. Old days, your family members and me, when we did not have UML, we known as data flow diagrams and flow charts. Uh, have you learned data flow diagrams in your classes? Okay, just when I show off hands, it said due to low bandwidth, the video has been uh, uh, turned off. So even if you raised hands, I'm a blind man here, I cannot see your hands because the video is turned off. Okay. But you know, always put it in chat. So they are Right. View patient information. Who are all the object in the view patient information? You have authorization. Oh, you can't. So tell me if you can hear. Okay, perfect. I think uh, internet bandwidth issues here, my end. That's why I think you're losing. Okay, so we're talking about sequence. that happen between a group of objects, okay? For a given use case. In this case, the use case that we are talking about is view patient information. And then you can see on the top, you have the medical reception is going from left to right. You have the patient information.
clicked. Then you will send the The question is how easy it is to draw the big bandwidth issue here today. And I'm assuming. You should be able to hear. There is some bandwidth issue, so it'll, hopefully it will go away soon. Uh, so the question that I asked is how we. Yeah, now I got the video back. I can see all, all of you. So. Is drawing a sequence diagram an easy thing to do or a tough thing to do? There are only two choices. Easy is option one, not so easy. Okay, so uh, since I'm able to see the video of Good Level Leru, uh, show of hands, it's easy and all. Who, who thinks it's easy? Raise your hands. Wow. You are, I should hire all of you, man. That's cool. Um, wow. You are so you can see the the continuation. here. Will you show this? Okay, good. I think it's some some big event happening in India or what all bandwidth is taken by some. Customer usually does not see sequence diagrams. For me, sequence diagrams are a great tool for designers. It's between designers and uh, uh, and implementers, the developers, because it's kind of like a flow chart. It's not exactly a flow chart, but very close to flow chart, right? So, don't confuse the customer. Now, what happened? Use cases. It's not uncommon to have 500 use cases. Uh, five diagrams. Any six to nine month project would have minimum of hundred use cases. I can tell you that. 100. 
So the question is, will you draw sequence diagrams for each and every use case? It's very tough, right? So I just wanted the reason I'm asking these questions is just because they exist does not mean you have to do it for each and every everything. Okay, use these things judiciously. Okay, and no one has time to draw all of these things in today. What is the development paradigm today? What did we say the development paradigm is today in today's world? We already went through the chapter. What is it called? Agile, remember, right? When you are talking about agile development, who has time to draw all these diagrams meticulously like that? When each of the, uh, what do you call them? The agile cycles, right? Remember the two to three week cycles? No one has time to do in DevOps type. DevOps is another term that we use for agile to draw all of these things. This is all like we used to do them when they first came. But I doubt it if people use them today as meticulously. So take these things with a grain of salt, okay? The way we say in the industry is just make it work. Okay, you have two weeks to make system work, right? Okay, so let's go back here to my presentation mode. So then we have these structural models. Okay, basically nothing but it's like a, think of it as a subsystem model, right? Uh, or like a like a category diagram in UML, okay, uh, which shows all the various systems that are there. Okay, let me go here. I know I didn't give you a break yet. I will give you a break. Okay, see that class diagram. That's what we use here to show the various subsystems. Now the trick question here is, uh, uh, how you know? What are the subsystems when I give you a problem statement? Uh, what system uh, is that? Is that is that easy to determine, or is it more a collaborative approach between you and then the customer, or rather between a group of designers? It's not easy. I can tell you that there's no there's no hard and fast rule as to what the various subsystems are, okay? If you say, hey, I want to have a system, that's what I would do. I'm the, I'm the hospital head. Let's say I'm part of the Kamenini corporate group in Hyderabad, and I invite you to develop a patient healthcare system for me. If I give it to two different project teams, the subsystem that these two different project teams come up would be very likely different. There'll be some commonality, but there'll be some differences too. But it is okay. That is the whole idea of creating these diagrams where we can then talk to the customer. Depending on the customer needs, we can fine tune our subsystems. But class diagrams are the tool that we use to do that. Okay. So here you can see how he has modeled the classes. So you have a class called patient, and then you have a class called record. each patient will have one patient record. Okay. Now remember we talked about entity relationship model a couple of classes ago. Does this look like an entity relationship model to you? Yes or no? It really is, right? Why can't they call patient as an entity and patient record as an entity and say there's a one on one relationship? OK, now I will move fast, so I'll give you this a question for you to ponder. Why can't this be an entity as opposed to a class? Then the related question is what is the difference between a class and an entity? So I'll put it here. If I say text box here or in the chat, I'll put. What is the difference between a class and an entity? Okay, so I want you to ponder that. I know I said I'll make you work, do some work in the class today, right? 
uh, I will do that. Okay, so here is a big class diagram that they gave, uh, which you can uh, review. Um, I'm not going to go through that big class diagram there. Very straightforward, but think about in the back of my mind, think about what is the difference between class and an entity, okay? One second, why I'm not able to go to this one here because Okay, let me stop here. Um, that's a good stopping point. And I'll bring up the whiteboard here. Uh, stop sharing. Let me bring up the whiteboard here. Whiteboard, okay. okay. So what have we learned so far today? We talked about model. Oh, wow. What an ugly color I chose there. Uh, let me choose green. We talked about a model to begin with, right? Then we said as a consultant, you what you have to do is you have to do system modeling. We are continuing the chapter, right? And as part of system modeling, the predominant focus in this mod module seems to be various UML uh, diagrams, right? So you have uh, uh, use case, what do you call them? You have uh, activity, Diagram, you have sequence diagram, you have class diagram, you have process diagram, and a ton of others, right? And then I showed you, you said you know the swim lane concepts. I said, Swim lanes are better to model process flows, okay? Um, I also said, do you people know anything about DFDs, data flow diagrams, okay? So one of the, with all due respect to faculty members here, uh, even though I'm a hardcore electrical engineer, rather electronics engineer and a computer science guy, I intensely dislike data flow diagrams. I can argue about that over a beer when I come there. I don't drink beer, so but you can drink and we can argue, okay? Now, here is a work that I want the students to do today. Are you ready for doing some work in the class today? We can mention the operations in class diagram. Yeah, we can mention what is the difference between class and entity. We can mention the operations in class diagram. You are absolutely right. The real difference is a class has data. Entity actually characterizes data. You are right, right? Whereas a class characterizes data and the operations also. The operations which work on the data. You are right. You earned your points there. Okay. Now students, I cannot see your videos. I see some nice pictures there, but none of the videos for some reason. Let me, ah, I see video now, check out the guys from students. Are you, this is for students. Are you ready to do some work in the classroom today? I want a yes answer or a no answer from each of the colleges in the chat because the video is not coming. Let's start with Goodlevel Nehru, okay? 
Are you ready? I'm okay. Ideal. Ideal is what? Aditya Engineering College. Yeah? Okay, from Chakra no sir. Okay, ideal is ideal. Okay, perfect. Okay, Aditya Engineering College. Are you ready? By the way, don't do privately. You say uh, for everyone when you type so that way others know, right? So that way they will get motivated. Okay, so uh, good level arrow is ready. Uh, ideal is ready. Aditya, are you ready? OK, so this is what I want you to do. Let me state my requirements here. OK. Uh, each. Uh, college group. OK. First one. Split into teams of. Four when I say four, it could be if there are only four students, it will be one group, right? Um, Two. Okay. Pick one of the following topics. Uh, faculty members help me organize it there correctly. You can do a random drawing, okay? What we are doing here, okay? Let me, I'll say, yeah. How do I delete it? I don't know how to delete it here. OK, pick one of the following topics. OK. I can say a. Model a. University. Registration. System. OK, B. Model a. Uh, model a faculty. Payroll. Administration system. C. Model a. A course. Scheduling system. OK, so I want these three. Um, when you divide your teams into groups of four, do a random order, pick A, B, C in a hat. Whoever gets A, they do A. Whoever gets B, they get B. And whoever gets C, they get C. So this team of four, you're going to spend the rest of the time. There's, I understand there's only 30 minutes. OK, but 20 minutes, you can use the time to pick one of these things. I know you won't finish it today. But by the next class, you are going to upload uh, uh, your your uh, work in the community, and some of you would be presenting it in the next class. Okay, so let me ask you once again. You can type it in the chat. Do you understand the requirement? So we have we split the teams into teams of four. Uh, there will be ABC. Uh, you can have multiple chits, right? Take a take a sheet of paper, tear it, write ABC in different uh, pieces of paper, fold them up, put them in a hat. I mean, you probably don't have a hat. OK, topics not visible on the whiteboard. Wow. Uh, because they are green color. Is that what it is? I'm sharing my screen. OK, let me change the color. Oh, now fine. OK, that's good. So requirement one more time. Is each each of the groups there? Take the help of faculty members. They are going to create these small chits, right? ABC. Fold them up. Each group come there. Pick up one one thing, whatever that A is, gather your team. You are going to model a university registration system if you get A. Okay. Now I showed you what system models are. 
and I also talked to you talked about use cases and all the databases in the past. Use all the knowledge that you have gained so far. Whatever thing that you get here, you need need to show us some models. Okay, so you are going to present. We will pick your faculty members and I will pick couple to present those models in the next class. Understood? Each one of you, can you put them there in the chat? That way, that way I can sleep well tonight. Otherwise, uh, you will be coming in my dreams. Okay, nobody is putting anything in the chat yet. Can you hear me? Okay, I am assuming that you are able to hear me, right? Okay, perfect. So you are able to hear me and you got the instructions. Now, notice one thing here. I left the thing open there, open ended. I said model a university registration system. It's up to the student group to imagine what, what kind of features that registration system would have. I am not defining what that is. So let's say group one in uh, Chakrarti Garu's department there, whoever is attending, group one gets model A. And group two also gets model A. I mean, example A there. How they model the registration system would be completely different because they have to come up with their own requirements. I did not give them requirements, but I chose these examples because this is something that we all understand. Remember rule number one. If you do not understand the domain, you cannot model it. You cannot do a good job of it. So all students have some idea as to how these things work. People who get model B faculty payroll administration system. I suggest that they talk to faculty about payroll a little bit. OK. How much pay faculty get if there are increments, what happens? And uh, if there are deductions like faculty, people have deductions right from payroll, income tax, health care and all that. So a little bit of domain knowledge is required there. And uh, course scheduling system is very interesting because every semester there are a lot of courses that are offered and you have to assign them to faculty members. So how do you go about doing that so that there are no conflicts? Right, so there's some interesting things that you can model there. OK, now with that. Uh, uh, I will leave you with a story and I'm open for any questions the rest of the time. So here is a story. The other day I was just uh, reminiscing. My daughter came to me and asked me, Papa, how were your teachers when you were growing up? Because she thinks all high school teachers are mean. OK, and then I was generally telling them about all the great teachers that I have, but it brought back some very funny memories for me. I'll leave you with that story. So we were the first batch of computer science students in OU. And here was a professor. I won't name the professor, obviously, right? And uh, the methodology for his teaching was as follows. I think if I remember right, it was a computer networks class. So he used to come to the classroom. Open chapter one. And start writing page one on the board. Literally from the textbook to the board, OK? And he has a very fine print. He can write. Uh, uh, type 12, 12 or 10 on the board. OK, literally one page to one page is to write. And then his teaching was he repeat what he wrote on the board. OK, so his entire teaching was from textbook to blackboard and then repeating what he wrote on the board. That is how we continued for the full one hour of lecture. OK, so I will leave you with some imagination whether that teacher, whether we considered that teacher a good teacher or a, a bad teacher or what he shouldn't he shouldn't be in a university system at all, right? 
So whatever the case may be. So they, you do encounter teachers like that. I don't think it is like that today, but at least in those days we used to have teachers like that. OK, so with that I will end my lecture because I want you to use the remaining time to form your groups. If you already have your project team, you can actually use that project team to do that. OK, Chakravartigar, you want to say something? OK, so I think. So remaining time. Form your groups. Do a. Lottery of these. Of the three projects. And start working. Next class. We will have a group. A group from each college. Present. Their work. OK, so instructions are quite clear. Uh, I will leave the chat open till 1130 and another 20 minutes. Uh, if you have questions, put them in the chat or speak up. OK, I see some nice images now from good level Eru. Our show of hands are all instructions clear show of hands. Raise your hands high up. Okay, go to raise state line to hand the instructions are not clear. Huh? Okay, one. Okay, the person who raised the hand. If it is clear, this reminds me of uh, of uh, <laughs> lecturing in a Chinese. Uh, I went to Cisco China office to do corporate training. Akada when I train, uh, when we speak for half an hour, then we have to stop. So there's one Chinese guy who understands English quite well, right? Then they discuss among themselves in the Chinese language. So that way they understand the concepts. Then they say, okay, now we understand, move on. In a funny way that's happening here, even though you understand English and I speak English. The instructions cannot be much simpler than that, I can tell you that. Okay. Simple example here, not graded. The reason I'm making you do that, this is going to come in handy for your project. Final project and it will be graded. This is not graded. OK. OK, what about Chakravarti Garu's room? Is the, are the instructions clear? Show of hands. Before your picture video disappears. Yep. The video disappeared. OK, uh, what about uh, uh, Aditya Engineering College and Diet? I can't see your hand, so you can put them in the chat. OK, instructions are clear from IDL. Excellent. Uh, Good level layer college said instructions are clear. OK. Um, somebody asked a question here. Using which diagram we should model the project? You tell me, I don't know. There are a whole bunch of models there, right? So you decide which one would, what is the purpose of modeling ultimately understanding the, the user requirements and the process flow to implement it, right? I expect some people would draw you, uh, activity diagrams, some people will draw sequence diagrams, and they, that smart Alex student who wants to draw all of them and show them to impress us. Right? So I don't know. Any of those things, as I said, it's a tool, right? It's a toolbox. 
some people are comfortable with uh, swim lanes. I'm very comfortable with swim lanes, right? It's not only which diagram, it's also in which order you do that, by the way. Some people who are good in uh, functional modeling, they start off with use cases. But some people who are good with databases and so on, they start off with an ER diagram. So it's up to you. Whatever your comfort level is, you can pick one or more of them. But I expect to see at least in each of the models, I expect to see at least three types of diagrams. Okay. At least three. Got it? See, students, I told you, right? My lectures are not about just giving you a lecture. It's about you work and I work. And you don't work, I don't work. And then we can go watch some nice movies, right? Like what the US right now, the crazy movie that people are talking about is uh, that, uh, what is that? Bale Bale Magadi Wai. Everybody is talking about that. So we can all go watch that movie. Okay. Any other questions? Chakravartigar, then I'll wrap it up. When are we meeting next? Do you have any idea now? Or will you send me an email later? Now, by the way, strict instructions to students, I expect to see your work whenever the next class is. And we'll pick somebody at random to present. Okay. I'm done. Okay, uh, have a wonderful day everyone. I am